Hi, welcome. Last week, I invited you to watch a TV show called The Repair Shop on ABC. Did you get to do it? The whole point of watching that show was to get you think a little more about what a modern marketing sort of analysis looks like. And I wanted to unpack it with you today. If you have watched it, this um, clip is going to be interesting because I really go deeper on the, the surface of what they are trying to do with the TV show, The Repair Shop. So I'm going to look at three things today. One, marketing trifecta. So who is it for, what's it for, and what the promise is of that show. The second part is the value they create, the TV show, what they are creating apart from superficial, what you can immediately say while well, they repair things. But we know for sure that there is something else on the, underneath that, don't we? The third part is their positioning, how they have positioned against all other TV shows available. So let's look at the first one, because it could be a lengthy clip today. First one, who is it for? You can say it quite easily. It's for anybody who's got something, something of an heirloom or family piece of an object that is broken to be repaired. Anybody who has an object that is broken sitting around the house, that's who is it for. But we can go a little, little more specific there. It's anybody who value the memory of that object. So yeah, that's one way to look at it. What's it for? It's about repairing things of not extrinsic value, but something that has a meaning to people. Repairing something meaningful, basically. The promise of the show is this, as far as I can tell, is that if you hold something dear and it's not broken and you want to bring back the memory, we are here for you. We are repaired to the former glory or honoring the life of that pro object so that it's not looking too spanking brand new. It has all the history and we will do a, what they call sympathetic restoration. So that's the promise. In other words, it's, it's, just, it's not simply repairing something. There is a, a lot of personal meaning attached to the repair they do. So it, it gets a little clearer, and I'm sure I get to articulate a little better as I go along with this clip. So the value, the next part I want to talk to you about, the value they are creating. What's the value? Often we think about very superficial value, superficial thing that we do as in, I'm a photographer, therefore the value I create is the images that I create, images I make with my clients. But you know for a fact, if you have been following me at any length of time, you know that's not it. There's something else going on there, right? So the value they are creating with the repair shop is this, is nostalgia. If you actually followed along the uh, value creation videos that I created quite a few weeks back, you know for a fact that Maslow's needs hierarchy Nostalgia, nostalgia is one of the key things that people value. They want to remember, they, they have, people have memories they cherish. So in repair shop, nostalgia is played very, very effectively because everything that people bring in, have, bring into repair, have a lot of memories attached to it. Although it could be just something really, really Extreme is extrinsically, they may not have a great value, but intrinsically, they put so much meaning to it, and nostalgia is a big component of that. Then what happens after getting repaired? If a, a small object gets repaired, and the value they get to create as a result of that is legacy. So as you can see, the repair shop plays on a much higher value in Maslow's linear hierarchy or the elements of value uh, depicted by Bain and company. Do you see that how interesting this is? This TV show alone can be 
unpacked in so many different ways. So just off, at the top, off the top of my head, these are the things that I found as I was watching a few episodes. I must admit, I've been watching quite a lot of it because it's, it's quite relaxing and I can just turn myself off and just watch things getting repaired and people sharing their amazing stories. So, nostalgia and legacy. That's the value they create. What do I mean by that? If you look at people, if you actually did watch the show, you will, you will realize a lot of items are old, passed down the generations. In other words, when things get repaired, they can then pass it on to future generations. That's what I mean by legacy. It's not just getting something fixed. I keep saying this, but do you get what I mean by that? Yeah, I hope it's clear now that if you relate back to the work that you do, it'll be, you will now get to understand what you provide as a service provider, what you provide as a product widget seller if you have a product to sell. It's not so much the thing or the service that you provide that's the value. The value is the meaning people put on whatever they receive, whatever they, they purchase from you as an exchange. And that's the value you get to create. So the last part is positioning. How they have positioned themselves, the repair shop, against, say, the most obvious one that I can compare with is Antiques Roadshow. If you don't know <laughs> Antiques Roadshow, I would like you to Google it. That show has been around for decades, literally decades probably coming off for nearly 50 years now. Maybe not so much that, but it's been around for a really long time. That means it's a big show. Young and old, all, all people of people of all works of life watch that show on BBC and also on ABC Ivy. Now, if you look at ABC um, Antics Road Show, the, the key component of that show is external value of things that are brought on to be looked at by experts. The experts share their knowledge. So that's really how the show is positioned. The value of an external value, extrinsic value of a thing, something that pe people pick up from a yard sale or garage sale and turned out to be a super expensive, you know, um, high on demand, high demand antique piece that they then realize, oh my God, this is so much more valuable than I thought. So that's, that's the fun part of Antiques Roadshow, whereas the repair shop is something else entirely. Let me just look at the note here. So the, in, in the x-axis for the repair shop, if you compare that with Antiques Roadshow, we can look at, instead of external extrinsic value, we look at sentimental value. The objects that are looked at or they are featured in the show, they often have sentimental values more so than actual monetary values. Although having worked on um, one of the key like experts in the country, probably the value of that object once repaired would go up because purely for the fact that it's on it was on, on TV. But in a sense, those objects that get repaired, they don't always have huge monetary values. They have what's known as no nostalgic or sentimental values. So that's the difference between Antiques Roadshow and the repair shop. If I look at y-axis, there's something else also. The hero of the story, hero of each segment, isn't the object, it's people. See, the bulk of the show is about people who bring in the object and their stories and the people who repair, the people who behind the scene repairing, repairing that broken object. So, in Antiques Roadshow, it's all about experts sharing their knowledge, telling them all the stories of how why this piece of porcelain is so expensive and why it's important historically, etc., etc. Whereas in repair shop, it's not really about the thing, it's about people. 
the people, craft people who are behind sharing their expertise, but not by talking about it, but by showing. So, I don't know, I found this exercise so, so interesting. And I got to really unpack what I have learned from reading the book, This is Marketing by Seth Gordon, and countless sessions of um, this is the, the marketing seminar by Seth Gordon, the, the work that I've been doing for several months. And this show basically gives me all the opportunities to actually look at all the elements that are presented by Seth Gordon, the marketing work that he's been doing for a number of decades. So I hope that was interesting for you. Now, if any of this is not clear, do give me a shout. We can pick another, another one. It doesn't have to be a TV show. It can be just a product. It can be your own project that we can unpack. So the importance, the reason why I go through this with you is because I would like you to really get what your marketing, what your branding personally is, the thing that you sell isn't the service you market, it's really what's underneath the desires and the, the values people hold dearly. That's what you're selling. The stories people telling people are telling themselves, that is what you are marketing. I hope you get that. <laughs> if not, it's okay, because I'll be talking about this on and on and on. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Ciao for now.